Good afternoon, Year 3. I hope you've had a really good week this week. Um, this is your final lesson um, this week and it's art. And I know how much you enjoy art. So today we've got a drawing lesson. We're going to be finding out more about line. So um, today we're going to develop an understanding of line and how it is used within art. By the end of the lesson, hopefully we should be able to uh, define different types of line. You should be able to apply this knowledge to experiment with different types of line. And we should be able to identify different types of line when we look at other artists' work. So let's have a look at this picture here. What types of line do you see in this image? Look carefully. Think about the length, the width the distance and the directions of the lines that you can see. We've got lines in the foreground, we've got lines in the midground, and we've got some lines in the background. Are all the lines the same? Spend a few moments looking carefully at the, this picture. You can pause the video now if you need to. So what types of lines did we see in this image? Thin lines, well, there's some thin lines in the center of the picture, vertical thin lines, I can see there. There's some thicker lines making up the hay bales and the roofs of the houses in the background. We've got some straight lines, short ones and long ones, but lots of different straight lines in different directions. We've got some curved lines, again, making up the hay bales at the side of the picture and even the smoke that's coming from the chimneys in the background. Like I said before, we've got some longer lines and some shorter lines for different parts of that picture. Vertical, those are lines that run from the top of the page to the bottom of the page. We've got some short vertical lines at the back of that first field. Horizontal lines, they run across the page from left to right. Hmm, let me see, I can see some horizontal lines again in the roofs of those houses. Diagonal lines, cross hatching. Hmm, cross hatching is when we've got some lines going in different directions over the top of each other. At the front of the picture, we have got lines going in different directions quite close to each other, but they're not overlapping. So I'm not sure I can quite see cross hatching in this picture. Maybe we'll see some more of that later in this lesson. Dotted lines. Mm, I can definitely see some dots making up the sky in the background. And also there's that field near the back. I think there's that's some uh, farmers perhaps working in that field. And um, it looks like there's some dots where they're there where they've been cutting down um, the hay. Spirals, those clouds definitely look quite spirally to me. So what is a line? Hmm. Well, the simple thing to say is a line is a connection between two points. Sometimes that line might be straight, sometimes it might be curved, sometimes it might be squiggly wiggly in all directions. Line is one of the most important elements of art. Imagine, could you draw, design or paint without using lines? I think it'd be quite difficult. Line is essential to the creative process. It can communicate a thought, an idea or even a feeling. A line can vary in width, length and direction. Lines can also be horizontal, vertical, diagonal, straight, curved, thick, thin. Line is used to sketch, draw and outline. They help you develop the composition of your artwork. Let's look at these things in a bit more detail. So how is line used in art? Well, line forms the basis of any good piece of artwork. It's kind of your starting point. So here's an example of an artist using contour lines. Contour lines are the outlines of an, object, of an object, shape or form. Contour drawing is a technique where the artist sketches the outline of the subject. Contour drawing focuses on the shape of the subject and the artist is not concerned with detail. Basically, it's the outline of the drawing without any detail added in. 
and some artists use this as a style in their artwork altogether. The French word, word contour actually means outline. Expressive line. Well, lines can be used to show expression or feeling. A short, thick line like this one, um, straight as well. Well, that has gives us one kind of feeling and it'd be very different to perhaps a squiggly line like this one, long and thin and swirling in different directions. What feelings do those kind of lines evoke in you? Think carefully about that for a moment. So line can also demonstrate movement within a piece of artwork. And um, this is one of my favourite paintings here, The Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. And I love the way that uh, van Gogh has used short, um, short strokes, short lines, but close together and has almost made it look like the clouds are swirling in the sky there. Um, again, just using line to show the flow um, of the picture. We can also use line to make three dimensional um, objects. So we can give the object the appearance of it being 3D, even though it's on a flat piece of paper. We can use techniques such as cross hatching, shading and blending. And line can make an object appear realistic. Um, look at these spheres here. OK, they're just circles. But by adding in that those the hatching, the contour hatching, the cross hatching, the stippling or the scumbling, that's quite a funny word. Can you say that? Scumbling. We've created some three dimensional spheres from those circles. It's almost like magic with a pencil. If you look carefully at this painting, at this drawing, should I say, uh, um, in the bottom left hand corner, the wrought iron gates, they almost look realistic, like they've come to life just by using those different techniques in the drawing. So it's time for you guys to have a little go at this now. Um, in the resources that we've sent you, you should be able to find this mark making worksheet. There are two pages. Um, the first one has got lots of examples there, look of different um, ways in which you can use your pencil to make marks. We've got contour lines, we've got broken lines, dots and lines, um, all sorts of different things on there. Um, and you've also got a blank one. So just with a pencil, this afternoon, I want to have a go at doing those different um, mark making techniques. So all you need is a pencil, the worksheet and a bit of a can do attitude and see what you can come up with. And we look forward to seeing those. Once you've finished doing that activity, um, we can have a look at some of these questions. Perhaps this is something you could discuss with a grown up at home, or if you wanted to jot down your notes on a piece of paper um, and send them to us, that's fine too. Um, it says here, number one, line is a connection. What is it a connection between? Think about things we looked at at the start of this uh, PowerPoint. Can you name five of the different types of line that you have used in your activity? Where and when is line used when creating a piece of artwork? Can you remember what contour lines were? What's an expressive line? How is three dimensional line used when drawing? Like I said, we look forward to seeing your work and I hope you enjoy using your pencil in lots of different ways this afternoon.